So we're here in the garage and I want to go through my little boat, my Tracker 1754 Grizzly side console. But I want to go through this thing from the back all the way to the front. I get a lot of questions about how I've got this boat set up. And I've definitely had a lot of modifications um, done to this boat. It is, a, it is a Tracker 1754 SC, that is the standard hull. But starting back here at the back end, there's been a lot of stuff that, uh, that we've, we've tweaked and changed around. And even things that I've changed since I've had this boat. When I actually, when I first got it, I had a 60 horse prop. I now have a 65 jet on it. Um, that's the motor that I, that I run on it now and really, really love this jet engine. I've had a really small one once before on a flat bottom boat, but this is definitely the biggest jet I've ever had. And man, it's just, it, it's so awesome how the places where you can go with it, the places you can take off. With the prop setup I had, I could run really, really shallow, but I needed a little bit of water to get on plane. With this thing, the way it's set up now, basically if I'm floating, I can probably get on plane pretty easily. But uh, so I've got that, it's a Mercury four stroke 9065 jet. And I've got it attached to the boat with a Atlas Micro from TH Marine. It's about a four inch setback hydraulic plate. And with this setup now with the jet, I don't vary that plate a great lot. You know, depending on load, I may raise it up a quarter or a half of an inch, or I may lower it a quarter or half of an inch. You get in some real um, big chop, maybe on a lake or something, you might want to lower it a little bit. But for the most part, I don't have to do a lot of adjustment with that hydraulic plate on this setup. Um, these, these here, these are not just a fishing platform. They work really well for it, but these are called a flotation pod. Again, this is something when I first set this boat up with that prop motor, I didn't have, but when I added the jet, I added about a hundred pounds going from that 60 up to this 90, 65 and really needed to raise the back end of the boat some. And that's what these pods do. They do multiple things. For one, they add a lot of flotation. So when you're actually fishing, it raises the back of the boat. Um, it probably raised it, I'm gonna say three or four inches actual draft, even after adding 100 pounds more motor. The other thing they do is when you're taking off, it doesn't allow the rear of the boat to squat so much. It, this is just a lot more surface area on the bottom that keeps the rear of the boat from squatting so much um, when you're taking off. And then of course the tunnel. I've got a tunnel hole in this with that jet and uh, it's about a three and a half inch or maybe four inch deep tunnel that I've got under there, but it's enough to where my motor, when I'm on plane, when I'm running, my motor's always above the bottom of the boat. So anytime I make bottom contact, it's gonna be the boat that takes the punishment and saves that foot on that Mercury jet drive. But that's, that's you know a few of the really key things back here, the hydraulic plate, the tunnel hole and those flotation pods. You put those three together in the right configuration and man, you've got a boat that's gonna fish shallow, it's gonna run shallow and it's gonna take off shallow. I'm um, having all those set up back here. So as far as I got one other thing over here on this side, um, this is actually a, a deal for my hummingbird for my side imaging. It's a transducer slider. Mike Watson, who did all the welding um, on my tunnel work the deck modifications, all that stuff. He builds these as well. And it's just a way to be able, I can run side imaging on this boat, but I can also raise that up above the bottom where I don't have to worry about tearing it off. If you mounted that down where you're gonna get a good picture with side imaging, you're going to tear it off if you fish shallow out of this thing um, in the river like what it's built to do. We've got a second, uh, second transducer down there for, for my 2D for picking that up. Um, but it, it's still, it's above the water when I'm running. So I, that way it's safe from getting tore off as well. Um, I don't get a, an on-plane um, running transducer, running depth, but it works, works well that way for me. I've got a rail blazing mount back here. I've got them multiple places throughout the boat, but those are the USB powered ones. Man, that works so well, power that up um, for my GoPro for filming wise, but can, can put a pole in it like I've got there at the console, run it to power and it runs good all day long. So let's see, let's work on up here to the console, I guess next. And the modifications just continue. The further we go, the further we go forward in this boat, the original fuel cell was here. It was 11 gallons. Um, I pulled that out and there's actually an 18 gallon tank under the passenger seat over there. And we raised both of these seats and obviously the seats are not factory. These are out of a, out of a nitro that I had before that we swapped out to Dalco cruise air seats throughout the year, but I kept these seats for this boat. But we raised this area that those seats actually sit on about six inches, and that allowed us to be able to get that bigger fuel tank under that seat. 
and created a really nice um, dry storage area here under this seat. So I keep my rain suit, uh, keep some you know buffs, keep gloves, some extra coastal sunglasses, a thermosail, you know all the kind of necessary stuff. I'll keep my Onyx life jackets under there. They're in the truck, or actually hanging out out here drying out somewhere. But um, raising that up, it just made it a little bit easier to see. Um, and then adding these big seats, of course, helped with that too, but gave us some good storage and a good place to put the, put the fuel cell. Come on up here to the console. Um, on the, the two previous trackers I had, I never had a windshield, but when I got this boat, I actually ordered a windshield with it because that's such a handy place to be able to throw stuff throughout the day. I can you know, put my scales and put sunscreen and put a lot of different stuff in there that you want handy. Um, but also some place where it's not going to blow away. Something that does always stay in there is this little guy. Because when we go fishing, we want to look, we want to be happy like him. We don't want to be sad like him. When when Parker's with me, sometimes I have to remind him of that. I say, don't be this guy. Be this guy. But that's that's always in there for Parker. Got my scales there handy. Uh, got two Humminbird Helix nines. One here, one at the front. Uh, side imaging unit here. Mercury Smart Craft gauge. Um, of course, my nav light and, and bilge pump switch. And then over here, a little bit harder to see, but I've got a couple um, live well timers from TH Marine. These I, I put in, I, you know, when I first built this boat, I was still fishing opens and stuff out of it and won the 2017 open on Douglas out of this boat. But having most aluminum boats come with just an on or off switch for a, a aeration pump. Most of them don't come with a recirculator pump. At least not the Grizzly models, the trackers do, but um, the bass trackers. But I wanted to add timed live well switches, and, and those come from TH Marine. Really easy to install, really easy to wire up, and uh, you know just be able to put those on a timer. That way you don't have to run them um, you know, full versus circuit all the time. Got another rail blazer mount here. That's where I always put my phone throughout the day. Just strap that baby in, and it's safe. It's right there. It's easy to see, easy to get to. And I've actually got the Mercury Vessel View Mobile on this engine, so I can pull that up on my phone right here. It's very handy while I'm running. Of course, the gear shifter, and then here's my, I used to have two hydraulic plates, but just the one now. I've um, got the switch there for that as well. Um, that's about it here at the console. It does have hydraulic steering. You don't really need that with a jet because it's, uh, there's very little engine torque, um, but it's nice, it's really smooth. When I had that prop motor on there, I definitely wanted it. So I had the hydraulic steering already. We just went ahead and left it when we, when we put the jet on. Um, so we'll move on up here forward a little bit and we'll have to come around to the other side and show the, show the fuel tank in a minute too. But up here on the front deck, so we'll start with what was factory. The factory deck ended here and then this was all open behind it. And the live well was actually part of the, part of the console and it was molded on out of that plastic material. And it was like a nine gallon console or nine gallon live well there attached to the console, which for a lot of, you know, for a lot of anglers, the way they would use this boat, that would have been sufficient. But for me, for fishing tournaments out of it, I definitely needed a, a bigger live well. So we put it in the same place, but just added a 20 gallon live well um, right here in front of the console. Makes it really handy. When you catch a fish and you go to put it in the live well, you're still on the front deck. You never have to leave the front deck to, uh, to put a fish in the live well. So that was really, really handy. Um, and like I said, I'd added that, that recirc pump as well as the, the aeration pump that came, um, came with the boat. But that big live well actually in that open in 2017, on the final day, Drew Benton was up in that area as well. I had my limit of fish, about 15 pounds. My co-angler had his three fish limit that I think weighed seven or eight pounds. Drew had one that day, had a tough day, but his co-angler had a couple. So we ended up having 11 fish in here because Drew broke down, actually tore his lower unit off trying to come back. Um, he was not in a tracker tunnel hall. But, uh, but yeah, he knocked his lower unit off as that, you know, likely to happen up there. But I, I carried 11 fish back in this live well for a couple hours and they were all just happy as they could be. So that was a, it was a good thing to have that increased live well size. Um, on this boat, the way it's set up, I always keep all my rods over here on the driver's side. Uh, just a, you know, a good TH Marine rod strap there to hold them all down. Here in this front box is where I keep my, I've got my trolling batteries. Those are all three Lithium Pros, um, 100 amp hour, uh, batteries that are in there 
And man, that's plenty of power for me to go in a river all day long. Can run that thing nearly on high, 36 volt. That brings us up here to the trail motor. It is a 36 volt uh, Minn Kota Old Trex with spot lock. Man in the river, that is, that is definitely the way to go, that other Helix 9. But something I've got on this boat that I do use a good amount when I still have an anchor is this Minn Kota Deckhand 40. It's a really, it's an electric anchor. Man, it's super, super handy in those places where the current is heavy or you just know you wanna, you wanna hang out for a while. And man, running spot lock may, you know, you just don't wanna want the noise of it or whatever, but I can pull up river of that spot, drop that anchor, lock it in place. And as long as it grabs good, man, I, I, I could stay there as long as I want to. So it's really, it's really an efficient way to fish in the river as long as you don't lose your anchor. Both like the last two times I've been, I've lost an anchor. So I've got to go back to Bass Pro. I actually went the other day and they're sold out. So whenever they get some more anchors in, I've got to get, I'm going to go ahead and buy a spare again, but, uh, but get me a couple more anchors to put on this thing. I guess I just didn't tie a good knot or something. Um, come on up here. I've got, uh, I actually hardwired in my nav lights on the front. These are a couple of LEDs um, from Blue Water that I had, had hardwired in. So that way, you know, I have the pole light in the back, but just have those two just to flip the switch on so I didn't end up having to, to put a light in here because as you can see, it would actually be pretty difficult just because of where that's placed with the trolling motor, um, you know, actually in its stowed position. And I modified my trolling motor a little bit for this boat. I uh, cut down the shaft length about seven inches and I actually took off this, this fork here, this bracing fork um, that comes on an old Trex because I fish, this boat is a shallow water boat. I'm never going to be out in the middle of the lake and four foot waves and need that trolling motor all the way down. What I need is that trolling motor scooted all the way up, the prop almost breaking the surface most of the time. And when you're fishing like that and this boat's lower to the water than say my nitro is, you just, you'd have to raise that trolling motor up so high, I would have this much shaft sticking up above, you know, above the mount that I would hit it when I was sidearm casting and stuff. So I actually just shortened the shaft on this thing and I can, and I can have it slid way up and it not hit that fork when I go to stow it. So a couple modifications there that I did, uh, did to my old tricks. A short thing on how to do that, if you want to shorten the shaft, it's not that hard really. You just pull this head off, four screws here, take that off, take this screw here loose, and you unplug the wires in there, take this top cap off, and then just very carefully cut around that tube um, however much you want to take off of it. It's actually really easy to do, but uh, I've done that, done that on a couple of them, my boat and a couple of my buddies. One other thing up here is this battery gauge. Um, I've got a battery gauge there just to show me how much juice I've got in my, in my Lithium Pros batteries. It's really nice to have that battery gauge there handy, easy to see all the time, um, just to kind of keep, keep up with that. Coming on down on this rail of the boat, one thing that's nice on all the trackers is that Versa track. It's the track that runs along the side of the boats. It makes it really easy to put accessories in there, especially the ones from Railblazer. They've got a lot of different mounts any kind of configuration that you'd want to put in there. But this is a tackle caddy, I'm able to keep the baits I'm gonna, gonna be fishing with in there. Got my pliers, got you know line cutters, hook sharpener, everything that I need handy, or I can stick a bottle of water in here. But I always got a pack of bomb crawls right there in that tackle caddy. They're super easy to get to. And if I've got Parker and his buddy with me and I need like two dozen jig heads in here because they're always getting hung, having to break them off and I, well, I can't say much, that's me too, but that's a good place to keep everything that you want really handy in that little tackle caddy. And I have it on this side instead of over there because of my rods. My rods are always over there. If that was above my rods, that occasionally get stuck under it, I might have a chance of breaking a guide off or something. So having that on this side, rods over there, you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, here in the, in the center, so saying again, the front deck ended at this line and the, we extended everything back. Of course, the console or brought the live well up over there. It gave us a lot of room to add some really nice storage here. We put the rod box in the center since there was already that cavity, that opening from the factory box that was there. It allowed us just to run those rods all the way underneath. So this box here is my rod box and I can put a seven and a half foot um, platinum rod, rods I flip with. I can put that in there without any trouble at all. 
Raw tips go all the way up under the recessed foot pedal and uh, plenty of room there. I can put like 20 plus rods in there if I stack them in there really easy. And this box is a dry storage, um, able, to, able to carry way more tackle than I ever need for a day's fishing in the river. These are my little, my little prop up sticks. I've got one in each of these just to be able to get in there, um, you know, open it up, keep it open while I'm, while I'm in here working. But yeah, plenty of tackle um, and everything in here, I pretty much leave in this boat. I've pretty well got it set, set up and stocked with the stuff I need to where I'm not having to move too much out of my, out of my nitro back over into this boat. Really handy things here are those TH Marine magnets, man. Being able, to, I've got them in my bass boat as well. Being able to just take a bait off from the day, stick it up there and not have to put it up right away or something I may want to use a little later. Those little TH magnets are, are definitely handy, um, handy for that. But really good, big dry storage box to keep everything, keep everything in place. Um, back here, so the pass underneath the passenger seat, like I said, is where the 18 gallon fuel tank is. And with this motor, which it's technically a 90 horse motor, but it's got that uh, jet foot on it, so it makes it a 65 horse at the at the foot. But it it burns wide open. It burns about eight gallons, eight to nine gallons an hour, um, is what it's at. So I know with 18 gallons of fuel, I've got more than two hours of run time, and I'm running 28 miles an hour or so, so nearly 30. I can run about you know, going up on 60 miles um, round trip or so without uh, without having to worry about anything. So probably more like 70, 75 miles round trip if I need to make a, you know, need to make a big long trip or something in this thing. So it's pretty fuel efficient and having that little bit more increased, uh, you know, having an increased fuel capacity definitely helps for, for those longer runs. Put a, put a handle here for my co-angler or you know, fishing buddy to hold on to. Some of those places we go through are a little hairy. But another couple of railblazer, the VersaTrack mounts down through here, one just with the G hold to hold that in the push pole, my super stick, and one down here with a little clamp in um, to hold it. Then I always just keep a couple extra little garden stakes in here for whatever we run across that we may need. Where this original fuel cell was um, is where I put my crank battery. We've got a toolbox, fire extinguisher, um, fuels, fuel, fuse panel in there, a master cutoff switch. And I actually rewired this whole boat myself. I mean, I, I wired the live well switches in. I did all the fuses, run the wires to the front. I did every bit of wiring in this boat uh, myself. As soon as I got it, I pulled all that, all the old stuff out. I just wanted it to be the way I wanted it with that fuse block and know where everything was. In case I got a problem, I knew exactly where to look. So. All that wiring in there I did myself, and that's why it's not maybe as tidy as some of it would be, but I know what, how it all works. Last back here, just this little storage box. Um, good place to keep keep my throw cushion, a couple extra life jackets in here, and uh, my, my little grease pump. After every few days of, of running that motor, um, that's one thing on those jets, you want to grease that. Uh, that little fitting down here on the foot just to squeeze any water out of that out of that bearing But so I always keep that in there That pretty well. That's pretty well all the way around um, All the way around this boat. There's nothing else. You know that the tunnel underneath from the back going forward That's really the only other modification I've done to the hole um, Consider doing some of those roll-on coatings and stuff, but just not done that yet may end up doing that in the future but uh, but man, I've had had a lot of good success out of this boat. Very first big tournament I fished out of it was that open up on Douglas and, uh, and this boat contributed in a, in a win that week and even got a rule change. So uh, it was definitely a, uh, definitely a fun, it's a fun boat. That's mostly what it is now, it's a fun boat. And it's something that I, I love to get to go fishing out of. I love to go new places in and you know just go exploring with that Mercury jet drive. It allows you the ability to go to so many places that other boats can't. So. That's it. I hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tour of my of my tracker, and hope it inspires you. You know, if you've got a boat like this, you want to do some modifications to it, man, just get out there and start tinkering around, and you can make something really special.